I'm all for the slow and steady wins the race, but I'm not a total glutton for punishment. Or maybe I am. Welcome back to my channel. It is Friday. I hope you're sitting down with a cup of something and, and ready to chat knitting. Knitting, quilting. I've been trying to decide all morning what I wanted this episode to be about because there's just so much. So much, my friends. First of all, I have a 40k subscriber giveaway prize to announce because last week this channel hit 40k subscribers. I mean, guys, mind is blown. Mind is blown and I wanted to do a special giveaway, whether you're a subscriber, a member, or a lurker. I, I just wanted to include everyone in this, in this giveaway prize just as a blanket thank you. I mean, I wish I could be Oprah and give everyone a new car. <laughs> But you know, I, I am not Oprah, I am Kristen. And I was only able to amass one small giveaway prize package uh, to, to award to one lovely, wonderful viewer and subscriber of this channel as, as a thank you. So that's one thing that we're gonna cover in this episode. And the other thing, uh, I you know, I was going to do the Ask Me Anything, answering your questions that you left for me uh, in the comments section of last week's episode. Thank you so much to everybody for all your wonderful questions. There were a lot, I have a nice little list. Um, and while I was thinking about answering them this week, uh, I, I, I did want to do a roundup because as you know, if you're uh, familiar with this channel, I started doing monthly roundups, a hodgepodge talking about uh, all the things that I've I've accomplished or chatted about or finished in, in any given month. So I did miss December just because it was the holidays and life got the better of me. So I, I skipped December, but we are doing it. We are doing it for January. So we're going to do that. Uh, and then next week, I'm going to answer your questions and announce the winner of the 40k subscribers. So I hope you're cool with that. If you are, and if you're cool with knitting chat, quilting chat, and diving down miscellaneous crafty rabbit holes, <laughs> grab a cup of something, gather around, and let's get into things. All right, before I get into what the giveaway prize is, I need to talk about something. Leslie Ann Robinson, if you are not familiar with who she is, she is the knitwear designer behind Graffiti Knit. She is very well known for her brioche patterns and yeah, just Brioche, she is all about brioche. I mean, there's Nancy Merchant, there's Stephen West, and then you have Leslie Anna Robinson. And she, like each one does does brioche very well. They have their own aesthetic, but there's something about Leslie Anna Robinson's brioche patterns that I absolutely love. Granted, I've only knit two of her patterns in the past, uh, the current mood shawl and the prairie lace hat. Thoroughly enjoyed knitting both of those patterns. And you know, I have been stalking some of her other, <laughs> other patterns that she has out. Anyway, all that to say that uh, Leslie Anna Robinson and I got into chatting online and she uh, so generously offered to send me a copy of her new book, Brioche Knitting for Beginners and Beyond. Here it is. Oh my goodness. Leslie, congratulations. This is a beautiful, beautiful book. And you can see, I, I, I did all, I, I devoured it. I devoured it and just took notes and, um, you know, put little post-it notes on, on the patterns that, that I really liked and want to cast on eventually. Um, but yeah, Brioche Knitting for Beginners and Beyond, Your Definitive Guide to Creating Colorful, Lusciously Textured Knitwear by Leslie Ann Robinson, creator of Knit Graffiti Designs. I mean, so good. Love it. I am in awe of anyone that can put out a book. I would love to, I would love to author a book one day. I just, you know, I don't know what it would be about. <laughs> but anyway, I, you know, hats off to you, to anyone who can publish a book. Um, yeah, it's amazing. It's magic, magic. Um, so anyway, yes, I had so much fun reading through this book and it's exactly as the book suggests. It is a book for beginner brioche knitters and, and beyond. And as someone who already knows how to knit brioche, I feel like I still could learn some more. So even though, you know, I know the stitches, I know how to make an increase, a decrease, I feel like there are so many, there's so much more to brioche knitting than just that, you know, and really kind of mastering you know, all the different, all the different techniques to create beautiful, intricate brioche designs. And, you know, I know, I know there are some of you out there who are really intimidated by brioche knitting and, you know, tried it once and feel scarred for life. Um, I, you know, I'm here to tell you that this book 
will hold your hand. After reading through this, I feel like she really does hold your hand and kind of guides you through each step. Um, so it's not just, you know, textbook, like this is what you must do. She's very colloquial, very, you know, it's like a friend, a friend in the room sitting with you showing you how to nip brioche. And to make things even better, I really like the way that she broke things down in here. So not only does she have, you know, a, a tutorial up front on how to do each stitch, um, she divides each section of the book into, um, you know, based on skill level. So she'll start you out with a very, very simple patterns, you know, using bulky weight yarn or Aran weight yarn and ease you, ease you into the next level. So this, this pattern right here, I mean, this is easy beginner, hushed shawl and look how beautiful. So simple, but you know, so stunning. And when I say she starts you off really simple, it's she really does because you're only using one color. When you think of brioche, typically you think of using two colors, but brioche can also be knit using one color. So, you know, you start off with one color, bulky weight yarn, a simple stitch pattern, and then, you know, you eventually work your way up. Um, but the patterns in here, I mean, beginner or advanced, I, you know, there are patterns in here that I really, really want to knit, specifically this one. Um, the mist pullover, totally my jam. I mean, I I would, to I think we were, Leslie, I hope you don't mind me saying, but like we were, you know, chatting via email and um, she, you know, I told her I was thinking about casting this on and then she mentioned that she was thinking about coming out with a, a long sleeved version of this pullover. I'm like, yes, that's exactly what I was thinking because I was looking at this and I was like, I love it. I would just want long sleeves. So yeah, I think, I think this is gonna hop on my needles. Um, so, you know, then you work your way up and this is an intermediate pattern that I'm gonna show you now that I completely want to get on my needles. This pattern is called shimmering and it uses brioche, but if you look closely, it actually, it's a technique where the brioche becomes a honeycomb pattern. And I thought that was just so, so cool. Um, but I find lately that I'm gravitating towards more rectangular shawls. I feel like cause they wrap around my neck a lot more easier and I just like the way it looks as opposed to having like just a triangle. Anyway, um, you know, I'm, I'm going through different, different garment wearing accessory phases. Does that make any sense? Um, but yeah, anyway, love, love that shawl. And then, ooh, moon and shadow. I love the names. Leslie, love the names of these patterns. I love, I see a theme. <laughs> Moon and shadow, just a very simple cowl. And you know, you could have a lot of fun with color. Uh, and this one, yeah, again, is like two color brioche. Oops. Um, so there's that one. And then one more, this one is more advanced. Um, again, you know, she takes you from one color brioche all the way up to multicolor brioche using many, many stitch, uh, stitch techniques. But look at this one. Holy cow. Yeah. I, I just want to knit all the stoles lately, guys. Uh, this one, by the way, I should mention, striking and dynamic. Love the name, love the name. Yeah, Leslie, thank you. Thank you so much for sending this to me. Uh, again, just, you know, the layout, the colors in here. I mean, truly, truly, just chef's kiss. Amazing, congratulations again. And, you know, that said, because I, you know, I, because I thoroughly enjoyed this book so much, uh, I, you know, she sent me this copy, but I went ahead and purchased another copy to give away, to add to the giveaway prize. So, um, yeah. So whoever wins this, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. I mean, seriously, this is truly going to become a staple in my, <laughs> my knitting library. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, once again, Leslie, thank you, thank you so much uh, for sending this along and woo! But wait, that's not all. That's not all you can win in this giveaway. Um, you might have caught over the over when I was doing Vlogmas, I did a couple of Vlogmas episodes um, and I talked about how I whipped up a couple of project bags and I didn't know what I was going to do with them. Maybe I'll pop them in the shop, maybe I'll, you know, gift them to friends. Anyway, um, I have one more left, I gifted one away. So one of you lovely viewers will also win this project bag that I sewed. I know the fabric seems a little out of my wheelhouse, but there's something about it. I think it's like the neutrals that really caught my eye. And look at that. It's like a Jackson Pollock splatter paint situation happening. I just love the symmetry. And anyway, yeah, um, whipped it up. It, it can easily hold a small project like a pair of socks or a hat or the beginnings, the beginnings of a sweater, but it's a fully lined, fully lined and interfaced. Here's the inside. And then it also has a gloriously nice little handle for you to dangle and carry around with you. Um, so yeah, that is also going in the giveaway prize package. And, and one more thing, 
uh, I am also giving away a skein of my hand dyed yarn, Volan Vine Yarns, in a colorway of your choosing. So next week when I announce the winner, uh, if you're the winner, hop on over to my you know website, my online shop, and have a look at all the colorways that I dye, and, and you know let me know what color tickles your fancy, and I will dye it up for you. So yay! So Leslie and Robinson's book. A project bag and my hand dyed yarn in a colorway of your choosing is the the giveaway prize for the 40k subscribers and you know guys I just want to say thank you so much again for subscribing to this channel for uh, you know tuning in and supporting the work that I do it, it really does mean the world as I say every time and yeah I am I, I pin seriously I pinch myself every day I get up and I get to do what I love to do and yeah I you know Mm, so good. Again, I'm really bad at planning these things, so I'm trying to think of a prompt <laughs> that to, to give you guys uh, to enter to win. Um, so I guess I guess we'll go with uh, if again if you would like to enter to win this giveaway prize, uh, let me know in the comments below your favorite episode so far of, of all time, or if you're new here, just let me know what your favorite episode is, or if you'd like, uh, you know, you can let me know what you would like to see on this channel, uh, what you would like to see me cover or talk about, um, and all that jazz. And next week when I do the Ask Me Anything episode, I will I will announce the giveaway winner. So using a random comment generator. There is a website that lets you um, enter the URL for a specific episode on YouTube and it will randomly choose a random comment from the comment section, which is really useful in these situations. So. All right, that is the giveaway prize. So moving along, we are going to chat, we are going to chat the best of, the best of January, 2022. We are going to talk finished objects. We are going to talk works in progress. We are going to chat about um, the things that I've been into <laughs> during the month of January, maybe a little from December as well. Let's talk finished objects in the month of January because I, I cast this on at the beginning of December and then I finished it early January. So this, like, seriously, I worked on this nonstop in, in the month of December. I believe I took one and a half weeks off uh, for, you know, the holidays. And nah. <laughs> here we are, the Kalashal. It is done. It is done and blocked. I still have yet to wear it out. I've had it draped on my mannequin, Margot the mannequin, and I've just been admiring it. <laughs> admiring my work, as you do. Um, as you should, as one should when they finish something like this, I think, you know, it's... Oh, Gosh, guys, highly recommend this pattern. It is a pattern by Natasha Hornby. It was part of the line, a part of Linus Magazine issue seven. And yeah, it's just been on my queue forever. And I'm just so glad that I finally got around to casting it on. The yarn, the yarn, again, is La Mana Como. Buttered kittens, my friends, buttered kittens. If you can get your mitts on this, oh, so good. So, so delicious and soft and fluffy and mm, love it. I need a sweater in this yarn. It's 100% super fine merino, but it, it feels like so much more, I wanna say. <laughs> and anyway, uh, yeah, this, this project was just a joy, a delight to knit. And yeah, look at that. Look how beautiful. So good. Anyway, um, yeah, so that, that is my Kala shawl that I knit in the month of December and finished in January. And since then, I cast on doo -doo -doo, <laughs> the project you're probably all waiting to hear me talk about. Um, but I have to say, I, since I last chatted with you, I have not made much progress on it. But living in my Tenny Casey project bag, I, guys, I absolutely love this project bag so much. It's so big, holds so much, um, especially for this sweater, a sweater like this. Um, yeah, but here is where I am on my Don't Look Up pullover. And yeah, still on Body Island, you know? Still on Body Island, but we're getting places. I think I have maybe about three, mm, maybe, maybe two two more inches to go before I start the ribbing, and then I can go on to Sleeve Island. Um, so, and as I mentioned last week, I had run out of yarn to knit the color work, like one row, one row before I got to just continue on with one colorway for Body Island. Of course, Murphy's Law, the yarn chicken one on that one. Um, but I was able to harvest some black yarn from the swatch that I chatted about. Uh, so thankfully I was able to complete that, but I did end up purchasing some more yarn from Knit Picks to 
knit the other color work. The color work for when I pick up the sleeves, I have to continue with the chart to finish the color work. And then there's more color work at like right before the cuff. And I'm debating, but you know, let me show you show you the yarn again i really didn't need it this quickly but you know when the yarn chicken wins it's like <clears throat> gotta gotta get gotta panic order more yarn guys just to have it on hand for when you do need it so anyway that's what i did it arrived and we're gonna do a little unboxing here just so i can show you so yay so i ordered just just in cases i ordered two more skeins of Knit Picks Wool of Andy's Superwash in the Rouge colorway, which is this glorious hot pink. Um, and I've been holding it together. Did I order another? I don't think I ordered another. Let me see. No, I didn't order more pink fleece, but I've been holding it together with this pink. The This is this colorway, by the way, is called Cosmopolitan. Very appropriate. <laughs> but I've been holding the pink, the rouge together with Cosmopolitan to give that extra bit of floof. Um, so I got two more skeins of that just in case. And then I did get three more skeins of the black because it seems like this project takes more black than pink. Um, and I've also been holding it together with, um, their black aloft. It is called black, right? It's just called black, black floof. Um, yeah, so there's that. And I got three, again, I've got three skeins of that and ordered two more skeins of the persimmon. Persimmon, persimmon. I believe it's persimmon, persimmon. We got it right last week. But two more skeins just in case because you never know. So yeah, that was my that was my emergency nitpicks haul uh, to complete that sweater. But where is all this stuff coming from? Anyway. Um, yeah, so that is where I am with my don't look up sweater. But guys, can we talk about it? Can we? Yeah. I'm just so enamored with how this is turning out. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. Um, and I am, I'm debating whether or not I wanna do the color work on the, the sleeve cuffs. Like, do I, do I really need to? I probably should. I should, I came this far. But again, I feel like I'm getting to that point where I wanna cast on the next new and shiny thing. And I may treat myself to a new and shiny cast on this weekend. I know last week I talked about how I wanted to cast on the Once in Floral pullover by Maxim Sear. Um, and <laughs> I, I, I might treat myself this week, this weekend. I might, but at the same time, I really just wanna get this off the needles. I wanna be done with it. I wanna be done with it. I, I wanna get a, some form of a pattern out to you guys. Um, I know I said I'm not going to do a pattern. I'm not doing a pattern. I'm not doing an official legit pattern. I'm just doing notes, chart, and a little a little breakdown of how I arrived at the numbers that I, I arrived at. But that said, I hope that you guys are finding the Ravelry notes that I've been providing helpful. Um, and you know, I have been following the hashtag don't look up sweater on Instagram and there are so many, there's so many versions out there now. I mean, not, not a ton, but I believe there are two or three other people reverse engineering this sweater. And it's just so cool to see the different versions that are coming out and the different colorways and the yarn choices. Um, a part of me is kind of kicking, not going with a lighter pink, but you know, I, I like it. I love it. Even, even though I'm not a hot pink person, I just feel like it makes the sweater. It's my version and I love it. So anyway, yay. That is the don't look up sweater. That's where I am with that. Again, nothing much to write home about, but you know, I thought I would share some brain droppings with you. So, and that is where we are with that. That is all the knitting that I've done in January um, because <laughs> I've, I've fallen down another rabbit hole. Um, if you are just joining this channel, um, hello, welcome. Please subscribe because yeah, I, I put out videos for your viewing pleasure every week. Um, we're yeah, chatting about mostly knitting, but then but then there are other other deviations that I I I tend to pursue. Uh, words, Kristen, I can't word today. In the month of I think the end of December and during January, I completed. Two, two quilts. Well, one is just about done. I've decided that I'm going to send it out to a long armor. I will go, let me go get said quilts. The first quilt that I completed, and this to me is my first, my very first legit quilt. Um, I've knit a quilt in, I knit a quilt. <laughs> I've, I've, I've sewn a quilt in the past, but it's, ju it's, it was just a baby lap blanket that I sewed for my cat, you know, just as a practice. I feel like, I mean, that it counts, but it doesn't count. I mean, this, this was truly a labor of love. I mean, very, very substantial in size. It's a square. I believe it's about 72, 72 by 72 inches. Anyway, it's just, oh, I love this so much, guys. Um, 
and it's my cat's my cat's new quilt. Uh, we just throw it on the bed so she doesn't sleep on my pillow and get it all floofy. Um, and she she absolutely loves it. She loves this thing so much, uh, and it makes me makes me so happy that she does. Um, but yeah, I machine quilt. I, I free motion quilted this on my my Janome machine. Again, super proud of myself for doing that. There are so many mistakes in here, like you know, with eyelashing with the stitches. But you know what? For my first rodeo. I think I think this was a win. Um, and yeah, the, the fabric that I used is a was from a layer cake by Art Gallery Fabrics in the Her and History collection. I initially wanted to hand stitch the binding, but again, I realized there were so many mistakes in here and I already just kind of wanted to get on to the next new and shiny. Um, so, you know, I did stitch on the ditch for the, the binding and you know, Bob's your uncle, it's fine, it's fine. I have to say completing this quilt just sold me, sold me on quilting altogether as something that I could definitely see myself getting into. Um, yeah, it just gave me the confidence to dive right into the next, you know, somewhat rather complicated project, which I'll share with you in a second. Um, but yeah, that is quilt number one complete. Uh, and yeah, it, it also showed me that free motion quilting can be done. It's it's not easy, but it can be done on a home sewing machine. Um, although with this project that I'm going to share share with you now, I will not be <laughs> I will not be free motion quilting on my home sewing machine just because this, my friends, <sighs> is technically like a grand opus. It's not my grand opus, but it was definitely <laughs> a huge undertaking for me because all the fussy cutting involved. I was not. I did honestly. I had no idea what I signed up for when I when I tackled decided to tackle this project because I had no idea what fussy cutting was I didn't even know the term I just read the directions and as I was doing it I was like holy what what is this what did I sign up for um but here it is it's folded up I'll stand up so you can see this is the Kensington kaleidoscope quilt and it is called the Kensington it is called kaleidoscope because you can see that these birds right here uh, are, you know, pretty much all these blocks, most of them are in a kaleidoscope layout. So basically when I had a fussy cut for this project, I had to find the pattern repeats in the fabric, stack them on top of each other and make sure that they were completely aligned um, and then cut them out, cut out the square and then rotate them in a way so it looks like they're mirroring each other. Anyway, um, in hindsight, it wouldn't have been as difficult had I not pre-washed the fabric. Pre-washing, big mistake, big mistake. I will never pre-wash quilting fabric ever again before I quilt. Um, it's just it's just a bad idea all around. Um, you know, again, to each their own, but I, you know, have learned my lesson and especially when it comes to fussy cutting because the fabric and the weave just kind of warps and distorts and, you know, your your prints don't line up as they should. Uh, and that's what happened with this quilt. But, you know, I made it happen. As Tim Gunn says, make it work and that's what I did. So anyway, again, very, very proud of myself that I was able to accomplish what I did with this quilt. Um, and yeah, I have my quilt sandwich all set up. Um, you know, I've got, you know, I'll stand up again so you can see. But, you know, I have the, the quilt top, I have the backing, I have the batting. Uh, it's all in there and it's all basted. But after all was said and done, I decided that I'm going to send it out to a long armor, which will require me to remove all my basting and just everything. Um, because a, a lovely viewer informed me that, you know, when you send it out to a long arm quilter, uh, they don't want any basting stitches in there. Uh, so yeah, the basting pins will come out uh, before I send it off. And the reason why it has not been sent out to a long armor yet is because uh, Dennis and I are going to be moving in the very near future. Again, we are closing date. It's coming. It's coming. Um, we don't know when it is, but it should be within, fingers crossed, a week or two, we should be able to close on our house. Um, yeah, I mean, this is bleeding over into life stuff, but there are just a couple of odds and ends that need to be resolved legally with the mortgage and the survey of this house. Anyway, it's all very complicated, all very annoying, but, but hopefully in the next coming weeks we will be able to close and then we'll have to move house. So I don't want to send this out to a long armor. Should it take a little bit longer and then... Yeah, I, I, this will have to wait until we move into our new home and then I will send it out. But yeah, um, anyway 
Quilt number two. And I should probably talk about the fabric because I absolutely love this fabric, guys. The fabric is by Free Spirit Fabrics. Uh, they're William Morris & Co. collection. So, you know, if you're not familiar, William Morris is very well known for his arts and crafts style, Art Nouveau, prints. Uh, you know, you have the Strawberry Thief. You have, um, you know, just very, very natural, organic, wavy gravy lines that make my heart sing so much. I, I am a huge Art Nouveau fan. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I just want to wallpaper, wallpaper my entire house in like Strawberry Thief. Um, and he makes a couple of other prints that are just, you know, so incredible. Um, speaking of Strawberry Thief, uh, last, look at me, I'm sitting here with a little quilt. I feel so cozy. Where's my coffee? I got my quilt, got my coffee. It's Cozy. And it's snowing out guys. It's snowing. I hope you have a cup of coffee and a quilt in your lap right now because it's just it's so wonderful um, Anyway This is oh by the way in case you're wondering my mug. Uh, this is a mug from Moody's diner in Maine Let me see. There's the logo. It's so old Dennis and I went up to Maine many many moons ago uh, and He's like, we have to stop at Moody's diner because they make the best pie they make you know that it's just it, I believe it was, it was a diner that was actually featured on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives with Guy Fieri. Um, and yeah, Dennis just happened to go up there with, you know, with his family when he was little uh, to, to Moody's Diner. And, you know, it was just really fun to see it on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. And, you know, he had to take me there. And I got us both mugs just, you know, to have. And yeah, it was just very, very, very cozy. Um, anyway, what was I talking about? Talking about more TV. Uh, Last week I mentioned that I was very, very obsessed with Architectural Digest YouTube videos. Uh, I love, I love watching celebrity home tours. There's, yeah, it just, it's just so much inspiration and they're hilarious too. Um, and some of you are wondering what my favorite episodes were. Let me tell you. Um, I love the one with Dita Von Tees just because I love, I love Dita. She's amazing. I met her twice in my previous life, uh, when I was working as a video editor uh, for an online magazine, uh, which shall remain nameless for privacy purposes, um, I did get to interview her. And yeah, she is, she is amazing. She is awesome, so down to earth and funny and really awkward when I had to pin a microphone to her chest. Yeah, that, anyway. <sighs> I digress. I love, I love the episode with Dakota Johnson. I love the layout of her house and you know, her, just basically her approach to decor and how she lives. And yeah, anyway, um, I really enjoyed that one. But the one with Aaron Paul, the actor from Breaking Bad, he played Jesse Pinkman, um, his home tour. Oh my gosh, guys, talk about cozy and every like, uh, his home, I want his home. He actually decorated one room just entirely entirely in Strawberry Thief. The wallpaper, the pillows. <sighs> I want to be his best friend. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, that was a completely different tangent here. Uh, and I don't know, I don't know why I went down that tangent, but I guess, I guess we can now move along into, you know, the life section where I shot about what I've been up to, what I've been into and listening to. So there you go. Architectural Digest videos on YouTube has been one major thing that I've been very much into. As far as other TV, Dennis and I have been really, really enjoying uh, watching community episodes. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what log we were living under, but Dennis found it, you know, he was like scrolling through Hulu and, you know, I, I guess over the holiday break, he started watching it on a whim and you know, I just started watching it with him and we, we are completely hooked. I love The Office, but then Community is just like a whole nother ball game. It's, it's like our kind of humor. Anyway, um, yeah, so we've been enjoying that. And then we also started watching Yellow Jackets. It's very, very dark. I don't, you know, if, if you're not into gruesome, graphic, dark, <laughs> um, violent uh, content, then maybe that's not the show for you. But I'm here for it when it's done really well, when it, there's a reason behind it. Uh, the best way that I can describe it is that it's like Lord of the Flies, but with girls. <laughs> and you know, it's a all girls soccer team. It takes place in the 90s. So I mean, total throwback to when I was um, you know, in school. I mean, the, the music that they play in there, it's a lot of grunge music, a lot of, you know, just stuff that I used to listen to. So it's nostalgic for me in that way. But then also I just love the plot line. I love the story. I love that, you know, it's so, so dark guys, but I highly recommend it if you're into that thing. Juliette Lewis is in it. She's awesome. And oh God, Christina Ricci, holy cow, her character, amazing. I, you know, 
yeah, it, it's, it's just such a great show. Anyway, um, that's all I'll say about it, but definitely, definitely check it out if, if you're into that type of thing. I am actually getting very toasty right now. So, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, personal summer? No, too soon, too soon. We're, we're not there yet, Kristen. But anyway, I should really wrap things up, but I would be remiss. I would be very remiss not to mention the other elephant in the room because I've fallen very much down a rabbit hole within a rabbit hole of quilting and that secondary rabbit hole, uh, rabbit hole inception is, <laughs> English paper piecing. It is taking over my life. Uh, I want to English paper piece all the things. I've started to English paper piece something which I have not shared on the channel and I don't know if I want to share it just yet because I'm thinking about gifting it to somebody. Um, but believe me, there has been quite a bit of English paper piecing happening behind the scenes. And I talk about it over on the Monday Waffle. If you are curious, I talk about it on the Monday Waffle, which is my members only vlog that I publish on a weekly basis. Um, if you click the join button down below, again, I say this every week for a fancy schmancy cup of coffee, you can enjoy a bonus vlog from yours truly. Um, you know, casual, laid back, vlog where I just chat about, you know, what I got up to over the weekend and other behind the scenes stuff that, that happens that I don't always talk about on the main episodes that I publish. So if that's your thing, consider checking it out. Um, I do want to say that if you are um, viewing these videos on your iPad or your uh, iPhone or smartphone and want to become a member, you're going to have to go on your main computer to join because for some reason the YouTube app doesn't have a join button for smartphones or smart tablets. Um, I know it's really annoying, um, but the only way to join is to go over onto your main computer and click the join button over there. Um, I apologize for the inconvenience, but I do seem to have amassed quite a few uh, tools and supplies for English paper piecing and books. If you're not familiar with what English paper piecing is, it's when you uh, wrap uh, fabric around a piece of cardstock and you know, typically they're, they're all hexagons and you stitch all these hexagons together. The card, you, you add the cardboard to add stability. So when you're hand stitching, everything is precise. It just keeps everything in line and in shape. It, it holds the shape of the fabric. So your stitching is accurate. I hope that makes sense. But, um, you know, when I first learned about English paper piecing, you know, I thought, oh, it's just, it's all hexagons. And no, no, my friends, there's so much more to English paper piecing than just hexagons. I mean, this book I picked up at, on Amazon. I just, I was browsing and the cover caught my eye, but it's all about English paper piecing and fussy cutting. Look how beautiful that is. I would love nothing more than to make, this is all hand stitched English paper piecing. I mean, my mind is completely blown. Um, yeah, and these are all fussy cut to create like a, a kaleidoscope effect. Um, and it's really, here's the back of the book. And this is by uh, Flossie Tea Cakes, Guide to English Paper Piecing, Exploring the Fussy Cut World of Precision and Patchwork. And yeah, her style of English paper piecing just, I am a huge fan. Her blog is absolutely beautiful. Her work in particular is just absolutely stunning. And this book, um, my goodness. I mean, you know, she, it's, it's so much more than just a how to, she gets behind the psychology of it, which if you know, if you know me, I am here for the psychology. I love, I love the psychology of things guys. Why, why people do what they do. Um, and the one thing that really struck me is, you know, why, you know, like knitters, why knitters, why quilters, constantly have the need to, you know, do things, keep their hands busy. And she says, you know, I think she interviewed a um, psychologist in here and it basically removes you from the immediacy of the situation, which takes away the stress for some reason. And you're able to focus and engage more thoroughly in a conversation. And it makes complete sense, you know, just, you know, keeping your hands busy, it's soothing, it's relaxing. It sounds really counterintuitive because, you know, to show someone that you're listening, it's, it's important to make eye contact, which is true. You know, you want to show somebody that you're listening and engaging, but, um, there's something to be said when, you know, you're just working with your hands, keeping them busy, um, you know, removing yourself from the <laughs> intensity, the intensity of it. Like, oh, I'm, I mean, I'm having a conversation. You're worried about other things where it's like, no, I have a task. My hands are doing something and now I can focus on what's being said. You know, if, I don't know. I don't know if I'm making any sense guys, but that's what I gleaned from reading this book. And then she also interviews Tracy Chevalier, one of my favorite authors. 
I mean, it's been a while since I've read her one of her novels. I read The Last Unicorn, <laughs> because unicorns, um, but it, you know, that book was all about tapestries, and then she also wrote The Girl with a Pearl Earring, which she's probably most famous for writing. Um, but she also wrote this book called The Last Runaway, um, a book about English paper piecing, and I that 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 is probably the next book that I'm going to be listening to. So anyway, interviews her, and yeah, just this book, I absolutely love it, and oh god, I think this is what I'm going to try English paper piecing next because it just came in the mail. Um, but look at this, look at this quilt, all done by hand. Uh, this is the Patchworks of Lucy Boston. Um, it's just so incredible. And I actually picked up or ordered uh, two templates from, two templates from Amazon, uh, and these are them. You can't even see them, but it's just a an elongated hexi and a square. And that's all you need to create a quilt, like the one I just showed you. I mean, mind completely blown. And then throw in some fussy cutting, take things to another level, my friends. I mean, I can't, I can't even. Um, and then I was watching the, uh, the last homely house, another magnificent YouTube channel that, you know, a, many of you recommended or suggested that I check out that YouTube channel, uh, in the comments last week. And, you know, I, I had already stumbled on her channel because, you know, you know me when, when I fall down a rabbit hole, I just, I, I'm all over it. And, you know, as soon as you type in English paper piecing on YouTube, her channel comes up and. Kate, the host of The Last Homely House, I absolutely adore her. I mean, she she's based in the UK, and introduced, she did one episode where she showed off some English paper pasting that she did out of all Liberty Fabric, and I was just like, I want, like, what what is your life? I want to do that. Um, and she introduced me to this book. This was a birthday gift to myself because I could not, I couldn't stay away. Could not stay away. Um... This is, look, I mean, look, first of all, look, all of it, all of it, tiny little intricate English paper pieced pieces. Um, there are some hexagons in here. There are some diamonds, uh, you know, lots of little elements, just so intricate, so small. Um, but anyway, let me talk about the book. Millefi Millefiore Quilts Number 1 by Willine Hammerstein. This book, I'm not going to lie, was an investment. I believe it was about $50 US, but birthday, birthday month, you know, treat yourself, Kristen, treat yourself. Um, and, you know, this woman just, oh gosh, it's the La Passacaglia quilt, and it is absolutely magnificent. And Kate from The Last Homely House recreated one of these medallions within here, and she had to stop because the pieces were so small, and I, I could see, I could see getting to the point where you're like, you make one or two of these, and you're like, it, it, I'm not making a quilt, I'm not making a whole quilt. But I saw her versions made of all Liberty fabric, and I was just like, just shut up, I'm here for it, sign me up. <sighs> I want to make that, but um, yeah. So anyway, I, I've just been thoroughly enjoying falling down this rabbit hole, as you can see, or glean from watching this episode. I'm I'm obsessed, completely obsessed. I even ordered templates to cut these out. I mean, they do provide the the templates in here, but to make my life just a little bit easier, I ordered some templates. Just you know, again, speed up the process just a little bit. I'm all I'm all for the slow and steady wins the race, but. I'm not a total glutton for punishment, or maybe I am, I don't know, but yeah. Um, and I should mention that this book is written in both French and English, so, you know, it's, there's that. Um, maybe one day I'll learn French. We'll, well, we shall see, we shall see. And the other thing that I appreciate that, you know, it comes with like built-in bookmarks, so I just was able to do that and then save the templates here, so anyway, yeah. Oh, goodness, I love, I love that my, my quilt, my, my, crafting library is growing again. It's just so wonderful. So yeah. Um, so that's, you know, hopefully next week I will be able to share some English paper piecing with you. Uh, again, the one that I am working on, it's still kind of on the DL, but if you want to see what it is, sign up, become a member and, and all shall be revealed there. Um, and I geek out a ton more on there too. So yay. Um, so I think, I think I'm going to end things there guys. I, feel completely winded. I think I need a drink of water after this. But anyway, 
Thank you. Thank you so much as always for tuning in, hanging out with me, chatting, chatting about all the craziness that is that is my world of, of knitting and quilting. It means so much to have you here. Um, and if you haven't already, again, feel free to like and subscribe down below. I put out videos for your viewing pleasure every week. And until the next one, happy knitting, happy making, happy sewing, whatever it is you're into. And I'll see you next time. Bye.